Hey guys, uh, I was out today uh, flying the Cub and it was, it was pretty breezy. It was a uh, direct 90 degree crosswind uh, around 12, 12 knots, uh, 10 to 12 knots, gusting to 1820, um, which for the Cub, J3 Cub, uh, 65 horsepower is pretty significant. You know, I know you could post on the forums that uh, you went out in 20 knots of wind and it was a handful and guys will tell you, oh, that's nothing. You know, I, I go out in 30 knots and, and all that stuff. And you know, that, that's great, good for you. But in a J3 Cub, uh, with my comfort level, um, this was probably close to the windiest uh, that I've, I've willfully gone up in. Um, and it's, it's good practice to get out there and do it and work your way up um, to that. And obviously uh, go out with, with an instructor and do it. But uh, you know, 20 knot direct crosswind in a J3 is, is pretty close to uh, I'd say my skill level, um, you'll see the, I have the landings, they're okay, they weren't the greatest, they're pretty good. Um, but you know, at some point, and I, I would imagine it's pretty close to, to 20 knots in a cub, you, you just, you lose, um, you, you lose that control authority and the, and the wind just kind of overpowers anything you can do. And that's where you get in trouble. Um, so again, it was, it was great practice, it was a lot of fun, um, learned a lot, great experience, but you know, 20 knots in, in a 172 or 182 is a lot different than, than 20 knots in a J3. Um, even, you know, carbon cub is a lot different. You have a lot more power to get yourself out of trouble. You have flaps, it's heavier. Um, so even, you know, it may look the same as a J3, but it's, it's significantly different. Um, the airplane only weighs, the cub weighs 780 pounds. Um, it's, you know, that huge wings. So, um, it's, it could be a handful uh, and it can get that way pretty quickly with just a, a little bit of wind. So uh, when I first got the airplane, I would only go out when there was no wind and then I'd go out when the wind sock just started to move and then three knots, five knots and kind of work my way up uh, to where I am now to where if, uh, if, if I have to get somewhere, uh, you never really have to get somewhere, right? But uh, if I'm out flying and coming back home, uh, I'm at the point where if 15, 16 knot direct crosswind, I can, I can, I can deal with it. It's not going to be very pretty, but uh, I, I, I could deal with it. And it's also, it's, it's a good skill to have, um, you know, when I first started flying, I tell people, oh, if it's windy, don't go out, don't go out. But the reality is that it's probably always going to be uh, a little bit of wind and that that shouldn't necessarily stop you from flying. You just got to be smart about it and, and kind of have the technique, skill and, and wherewithal to, to know when to attempt to land, when to go around um, and, and what to do, what not to do. So, uh, biggest thing, uh, crosswind landings, crosswind takeoffs is, uh, the mistakes that I see is people taxiing out. There's zero crosswind, uh, correction. And if you can't have crosswind correction while you're taxiing, what makes you think you're going to have it when you're taking off and you're landing? So if you do it, um, when you're taxiing, you're probably more, it'll become second nature and you'll just do it on, on takeoff and landing where you don't really have to think about it. So it's about starting uh, and being disciplined to do that early on in your training. Uh, again, I am a flight instructor. Uh, I am not your flight instructor. So just think of this more as a, a conversation and techniques that I use. And before you go out in, in any strong crosswind conditions, go with an instructor. Um, it'll make your life a lot easier. So, uh, as far as taxiing, climb into, dive away from the wind, right? So if the wind's coming from the right, aileron in, uh, into the wind, it's coming from the left, aileron to the left, into the left. And the biggest thing with a tailwheel airplane, um, even more so, I, I think more so than the, the left and right into the wind, is stick back. Because uh, without the tailwheel down, you're not going to have any, any steering. Uh, crosswind takeoff, again, stick all the way back and stick all the way into the wind. And you can adjust that as necessary depending on the wind, but you wanna start out, stick all the way back, all the way into the wind. Bring the throttle up, count, you know, three to five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And at that point, you can bring the stick to neutral. Uh, you should have enough airspeed over there to have a little bit of directional control. What you don't wanna do, uh, especially on a, a strong crosswind, is go full power as quick as you can and push forward and get the, the tail up uh, without sufficient uh, airspeed, the reason why, or sufficient speed, the reason why is because you're not going to have enough airflow over the rudder. And what happens is the weather or the wind is going to weather vane the airplane, and that's where it kind of gets unstable and things can get tricky. Um, so don't think that you can just ground loop or lose control on landing because you can. 
uh, on, on takeoff, and I've, I've seen it, and it's, it's not pretty. So just be aware of that, and uh, don't be afraid to ride. You know, if the wind's coming from the left, left aileron, you know, ride that wheel into the wind, because if you don't bank the airplane into the wind, what's going to happen if you're level like this, you're going to start to slide closer to the side of the runway. It's not good for the tires. You'll start to skip, and that's kind of where things get ugly. So don't be afraid to get it up on one wheel, ride it into the wind, and when you have sufficient airspeed, get it up, and then just immediately crab into the wind. As far as crosswind uh, landings, you can do a wheel landing, you can do a three-point landing, uh, and the other landing I like to think of is uh, the, the go-around landing. So really strong crosswind, always in the back of your mind, be prepared and expect to go around. And I, I did one of those today and I'll, I'll show you that. Um, so some people prefer wheel landings, some people prefer three-point landings with crosswind. It's really just kind of a personal preference. Uh, both have their their positives both have their negatives um, and I'll show you a video of the negatives for the three-point landing in a crosswind is uh, the airplane got pretty slow and I was losing rudder authority as well as aileron authority and the airplane kind of put to the center line uh, it was fine but you'll see in the video uh, over the threshold over the center line crabbed into the wind and then by the time I'm touching down the airplane drifted a little bit and that's because I kept it flying for as, for as long as it could uh, and again, you could easily correct that. I just did a poor job of maintaining center line. You could cheat a little bit, maybe left a center line if the wind is coming from the left, or right a center line if the wind is coming from the right. It's also trickier to see because you're, you know, you're in the three-point attitude, and you have your 10 and 2 peripheral vision, but sometimes it's kind of hard to see exactly where that center line is. So that's why it's important to track the center line, even if you're, you know, crab a mile out. thing I want to mention and it's really important is to stay off the brakes uh, as, as long as you can and as much as you can uh, when you start using the brakes for directional control that's when you can really get yourself into trouble and uh, it should really be just an absolute last-ditch effort if uh, things start to get out of hand um, wheel landings are nice because you have more uh, flight control authority because you're obviously at a higher speed um, and you can kind of force the airplane or fly the airplane onto the runway. Um, but what's tricky about a wheel landing, um, and I'll show you in the video, you, wind's coming from the left, you're crab, crabbed in, and you kick it out. And then, you know, the reason why you kick it out is because obviously you can't land like this, right? To sideload the airplane. You're going to bank to prevent the airplane from drifting, and you're going to use your feet or the rudder to keep the plane, uh, the nose of the airplane pointed straight, because you've got to touch down straight. Even if you're off center line, uh, I'd rather you touch down heading straight off center line than touch down siloing the airplane on the center line. So what you do is you, you kick the rudder out to keep the nose pointed straight and you bank the airplane into the wind to prevent it from drifting. And you can touch down right on that upwind wheel, get yourself uh, stabilized going down the runway, and then slowly bring down the other main, keeping the aileron into the wind as much as you need to keep the airplane from the wind from lifting. And then once you start to lose that uh, rudder effectiveness, and you call it the rudder fade, 
got to get the stick back, uh, and you got to hold it all the way back in your gut and then into the wind. And what I've seen uh, people do and some common mistakes when people ground loop is for whatever reason they keep the, maybe they can't see or they're showing off, whatever it is, um, or just maybe poor technique, they keep the tail up way longer than it should be. Maybe they're full forward on the stick. And the problem there is you're going to lose the rudder effectiveness because you're going fairly slow at that point. And then the wind is going to weather vane the tail, and then you have absolutely no, no steering whatsoever. So the airplane is going to start to go off on you there, and then you're going to, the nose will touch down, excuse me, the tail will touch down, and that's where things get squirrely. So again, when the rudder starts to fade, get the stick back so you have that steering, and then aileron all the way into the wind. And right, one of the landings today, you'll see I had full into the wind. You probably can't see it in the video, but you know I felt the airplane really wanting to, to, to lift up. So it's very important to keep that, keep that into the wind and stick all the way back so you have uh, tail wheel steering. I tend to carry a little extra power. Again, depends on the length of the runway, the weight of the airplane, a lot of different things. Um, but I tend to carry a little extra power uh, when it's really windy. Number one, you have more control authority, but the Cub has a ton of drag, so it's really easy to slow down. Um, when you get slow, it's, it's kind of sloppy on the aileron. The airplane can drift, and you don't have much power to get yourself out of trouble, especially me, 65 horsepower, no flaps. Um, so it does help to have a little, little extra airspeed. Um, so like I said, the, the possible potential downside of a wheel landing in a crosswind is keeping the tail up longer than it should be, airplane weather vanes, and that's when you kind of get in trouble. Um, but what's nice about the three-point attitude is the airplane is already at its slowest speed, right? When the airplane touches down, it's done flying. So you usually don't have to worry about it, you know, getting airborne again, unless you bounce or there's a gust of wind, um, which again, just smoothly apply power, go around, get airborne, carpet in, um, and cram to maintain center line. It's nice too, you know, three point, you touch down, there's not that, that weird gray area where you're transitioning from the tail flying to the tail wheel down. You touch down three point attitude, the tail's already down, your stick shouldn't be all the way back at that point. Um, so that's, that's the one advantage of that. Uh, a wheel landing, you're pretty much going to tell the airplane when, when it's done flying by forcing it on the runway, flying it on the runway, getting that negative angle of attack on the wing so it stays down. Uh, aileron into the wind, and then once you get that rudder fade, you, you bring the stick back. So you have a little bit more control of that. Uh, that's pretty much it. You know, uh, crosswind landings in a tailwheel, it's, it's, at first it's pretty intimidating, but it's actually, it's a lot of fun, especially when you, you're, you just nail, like today I had, 
um, one or two out of, I guess, six or seven good landings. But it's really satisfying to come in, you know, plant that upward wheel, ride it out, and then get the stick back. We're maintaining center line. So it, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Um, and the other thing, too, is, uh, you know, there's – the the cub is it's a really light airplane i think it's like it's 750 pounds without me in it um so it's a light airplane so really any amount of wind seems pretty significant i think the formula for you know recommended uh crosswind component in an airplane is 0.2 times vso so in the cub it's something I don't, i'm not very good at math but let's say it's I don't know, anywhere from 9 to 12 knots something like that right so it's it's pretty insignificant um a little bit of wind makes a big impact on flying the Cub. And, uh, you know, other airplanes, heavier airplanes, especially tricycle airplanes, you know, 20 knots, it's, it's not a big deal. But in a light airplane, especially a tail dragger, it uh, can become a handful. But it's kind of what makes it fun. It's kind of what makes it special. Um, like I said, just be, prepared, just be prepared to always go around if it doesn't look right. Um, I came in today, I siloed the airplane, and rather than fix it uh, on the runway, I just just went around um so you know always have that in the back of your mind be prepared to go around um the other thing too if it's a if it's a steady state wind um, that makes things a lot easier when it's gusty it's a little trickier because uh, you're coming in and you know you're just about to touch down let's say on a wheel landing and you get a gust of wind and then it bounces back up and then you kind of gets gets a little sloppy and um Alternatively, if you're doing a three-point landing like this and you're just about to touch down and then you get a big gust of wind, the problem there is you're, gonna, you're already in that landing attitude and you're pretty, pretty close to a full stall because it's a full stall landing, right? You balloon up in the air and then you're you know, 15, 20 feet high about to fall out of the sky. So at that point, really don't try to save it. Just release some of that back pressure, full power, and, uh, and go around. Even if you... Um, you know, even if you touch down on the runway again, it's no big deal, right? Just apply power, might touch down again, and just go around. Uh, not a big deal. What happens is the trouble that I see, too, is if, if you bounce, if you bounce, a lot of people, they'll bounce like this, and then they'll force the nose down, and they'll bounce harder, and then they'll start to porpoise, and that's just not, not where you want to be. So if you bounce, uh, let's say you bounce, you're coming in, you bounce, you know, just like this in the attitude, you can just hold it and just kind of wait for it to settle. Maybe give it just a touch of power to kind of cushion it, keeping that attitude and kind of accept that it was a, not a very good landing, but it's, it's a, better than porpoising down the runway. So again, these are just a few things to look out for on, uh, on crosswind landings. Uh, go out with an instructor and, and practice them because they're really satisfying and a lot of fun. And uh, obviously it's a skill that, not only is it a basic skill, but it's a skill on a tail dragger that's gonna make the difference between you um, you know, flying the airplane out to a breakfast when all your friends are going out and, and the wind is just a little, picking up a little bit, or you staying home because you don't want to, you know, um, ground loop the airplane. So, uh, it's pretty much it. And, uh, you know, it's important because if you're not, you know, and I've said this before, you know, you want to go out there when it's windy because you want to practice and you want to become proficient, but just do it in, in small incremental steps. Like I said, I did it, you know, there's no wind, the wind sock started to move, then two knots, three knots, five knots, and kind of work your way up. That's, that's kind of the, the smart way to do it. Um, and this is a skill that should carry you on until the airline flying for anyone that's, that's going to fly in the airlines. And I can tell you that you'll know when you're flying with a guy who has flown a tail dragger because they use their feet. Um, you would think that most professional airline pilots are, are, are pretty proficient, but they're incredibly sloppy, uh, and you know I can't tell you how many times guys just really don't bother to touch the rudder at all on a crosswind. I understand some airplanes the nacelles are lower, and you just kind of, you know, fly it onto the runway. But uh, in the Airbus with the IAE engines, um, you got plenty of room there, and guys will still will just still silo the airplane rather than than do what you would do in a Cub or a 172. Aileron into the wind, use your feet to keep the airplane pointing straight. So uh, this is a skill that, that'll carry you to, to much uh, heavier transport category airplanes. Um, all right, so I got any questions, you know, shoot me a message or you have a technique that you think is better, let me know. Um, love to hear it. All right, guys.